Welcome back to The Prayer Link. Well, you may know him from the longest-running live-action series, All That, and the sitcom Kenan and Kel, or even the popular movie Good Burger. Comedian and actor Kel Mitchell has been making people laugh for years. Along with being a comedian and an award-winning nominated actor, he's also a producer and a youth pastor. He seems to have it all, but what some may not know is that he suffered from depression in the middle of his booming career. Recently, Kel Mitchell talked with our Charlene about his story and his latest projects. Take a look. We are so excited to talk with you. We love you. We love what God's doing in your life. And, you know, we see you on these popular shows that we named earlier, and you are bringing laughter to so many people. But deep down, you were hurting and actually suffering from depression and even attempted suicide. What was going on, and, and how were you able to overcome all of that? Um, man, I overcome uh, a lot of that uh, through the Lord. You know, uh, I grew up in the church, so I always uh, knew God. But then there's a difference between knowing God and having a relationship with God. And so um, a lot of, uh, you know, I went through a lot of depression. I went through uh, a lot of different uh, relationships with meeting people within the business. And it's not just the business, it's people that were on the outside. Because, uh, you know, like you're adulting uh, within uh, you know, the public eye. And so you're a subject to public opinion. Uh, you don't know if people are hanging out with you uh, because of your character or if they know the real you. And so it was just different things that I was dealing with, um, you know, growing up in Chicago and uh, losing friends, you know, that do gang violence and things like that. And then coming to Hollywood uh, to realize that there was a whole nother uh, beast as far as like understanding uh, and seeing people and navigating through people and them showing them real their real selves. Uh, and I went through a lot of that, you know, and so uh, mm -hmm. with dealing with that, it was like, okay, how do I deal with these things? I went through uh, substance abuse. I went through a lot of different things, but what ultimately helped was uh, having the love of God in my Amen. life. Amen. Yeah. Having a relationship yeah. with Jesus, that's what it's all about. That's, mm -hmm. that's what the world yeah. is hungry for. They may not know it, but that's what they're searching yeah. for, that we've all been there. Yeah. And, and today you are a youth pastor. Uh, this is a very yeah. important calling to reach young people with the gospel. What are some of the biggest issues you see affecting young people right now, and how are you working to make a difference? Yeah, you know, I, I think with uh, with the youth right now, there is a lot of, you know, cyberbullying. There's uh, frustration, you know. Uh, there's everything is like right now, as far as like you could ask Siri and all these things and just ask for things right now. <laughs> and But what happens when you're going through something and you have to wait to find uh, that love that you're looking for and searching for? Everybody's searching for something online, searching for this searching for that. And what it is, is that they really need the love of Christ, right? They really need that love in their life uh, to really help them. And I really feel like once youth understand like how God feels about them, sometimes some kids don't even, you know, get to feel that uh, peace and joy from someone that they're around or friends that they're around. And when they realize when they step into this word, Right. When they step into this word and they hear about how much God loves them and that they are part of a royal family when they invite him into their hearts, uh, it can really change things. And I'm always talking about finding the gratitude and everything, uh, because there's a big difference between being happy and being joyful. Uh, having that happiness is just like, hey, it's an emotion. It's my birthday. I can just be happy. But then a circumstance comes up or a situation that you have to deal with, and it can bring you back into that depression or bring you into an emotional way. But joy is having that joy no matter what. And that no matter what is, no matter what happens, no matter what comes up, I'm going to find the gratitude in everything. And so a lot of times I tell them, start your day out with the Lord. Start it off. Take your anxiety, take your depression, whatever it may be, to the Lord first. So then that way you prepare for your day. 
And so when you prepare for your day, you prepare, you put on your clothes when you go for your day, you do all that, but do we prepare spiritually? And I had to find that out too. So that was something that I did. I prepared spiritually for my day, get ready for my day, and that my response is always to respond in love no matter what happens. And that made me find the gratitude within everything. And that's why I did my book, uh, Bless Mode, uh, <laughs> which is a 90-day uh, devotional. It really is about letting you know that you are beautifully and wonderfully made by God. And no matter what happens, it's for you to remember that. Uh, and that's what this book is all about, to remember and get up and prepare for your day. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. You know, as you were talking, I was thinking about that scripture that Jesus says that the joy that he gives us, the world can't take it away. So no matter what's right. going on in our lives, you know, God is, he's our joy in his presence. There's that fullness of joy. I love that you touched on the, um, the blessed mode, 90 days to level up your faith. And in it, you talk about yeah. super like glue. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> Super like glue. <laughs> well, uh, well, the reason why I talked about that is because you know how glue sticks to you, right? Uh, confetti, it sticks to you. And the thing about it is that we have to understand is like some people get so frustrated. You know, I was one of them back in the day where I would get frustrated. Like, where is God in this moment in a low mm -hmm. time? You know, like, where, where is God? And he's still there. It's just that we have to be the ones to know that he's there. We have to tap in. He's the one that gave us that breath that we have every moment. That's why it's so important to stop and just breathe. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's the breath of life that he's given us, meaning that he's always with us. He's sticking to us like glue. So he's always there the ups and the downs. And so knowing that and realizing that, that makes me get through my day a lot more, especially when it's a decision that I'm about to make. If I know that God is sticking with me, you know what I mean? And he's sticking with me, I'm going to I'm gonna do it his way, not my way. And that's why I didn't name my book Kel Mode, because if I named it Kel Mode, it'd be a lot, well, what if this? And wait, this person did this to me. And wait, hold on, it's too much thinking of that. But if I go to the one that designed me who planned my day and I go into it in bless mode, knowing that he's sticking with me, well, I'm looking through the eyes of Christ. So let's go. Amen. He's sticking with me. Let's go. Yeah. I love that. I'm going to have to tweet that. That's a tweetable moment right there. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your other book, um, Prank Day for Young Adults. That sounds yeah. really good too. Yeah, oh, Prank Day. Uh, so Prank Day is a book for tweens, uh, 8 to 12 years old. Uh, it's a novel. This is my sec second book. Uh, and it's a action adventure. It's about a kid that does pranks on April Fool's Day. And then the next day, on April 2nd, all the pranks come true. So now you have all of these, like, you know, clowns coming out of the toilet. You have refrigerators running through the neighborhood. <laughs> and you have flying spiders. And he has to figure out why this is happening. But at the core of all of this, um, the reason that it is happening is because he's trying to be someone he's not. Right. And he's trying to impress some friends that he thinks cooler than him and an impress a girl. And he goes on a journey a journey that he would have never went on if he would have just been himself. But on this journey, which is super awesome, he ends up finding himself and finds out that you can't judge a book by its cover, that what he thought about other kids and other bullies and all these different people is that they're making their decisions for some reason too. And also he finds out along the way that they have a lot in common. And what this does is it shows kids to really have a real conversation, you know, mm. with your friends and uh, never judge a book by its cover. And uh, I, it's really just a fun, fun story. Uh, I grew up on movies like, you know, Back to the Future oh, yeah. and My Science Project. <laughs> oh, my and uh, it, it has that fun and that Nickelodeon fun that you know me for too as well. Kel Mitchell, thank you so much for sharing your heart with us. It came through the, the interview. Thank you so much for what you're doing. And we praise God for what he's doing in your life and the impact that you're, you're making there uh, in the work that you do, the people you're meeting and that you're around. God bless you. Thank you so much for your time. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you for what you do as well. <laughs> thank you, my friend. God bless.